about some compensation and expectations for Aaron Rodgers in year one. What am I expecting from the Jets and Aaron Rodgers in year one? We're going to make this a quick one. I, I see 11 to 12 wins on the schedule knowing what Aaron Rodgers is going to do in those tight moments, in those games that they lost, you know, when they lost, I think, six straight down the stretch. Um, so I see 11 to 12 wins on the schedule. Oddly enough, I think they're going to go three and three in the division. I think they split with the Dolphins. I think they split with the Bills. And I think they split with the Patriots. I think that's very reasonable. The Dolphins have a great offense. The Bills are clearly a smash mouth team. And Bill Belichick knows how to really solve anything that's thrown his way. Um, you know, and, and like I said, the Pats know the Jets. They got Miami. They got Buffalo. And, you know, those teams are both good, if not great, on the verge of it, right? But for me, looking at the expectations for the Jets in year one, it's got to be at least the divisional round, like at the bare minimum. I'm I'm not even a Jets fan, and I'm not settling for a wild card for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. I'm just not. Like, all of this that's been taken into account, everything that's been happening, you know, like, and you're just, you just want to accept a, a wild card win, a division win, maybe. I'm not saying that's what the fans want, but it's got to be at least a divisional round. Really, it should be the title game at the bare minimum, considering Aaron Rodgers' status right now. Clearly, it didn't look good because Devontae Adams was gone. But again, 11 to 12 wins. I think they go three and three in the division. You have to at least get to the divisional round. I think it's kind of unfair and lofty to say, oh, AFC title game first year. Go to the divisional, maybe lose it by a nail biter. Maybe you make the AFC title game. But I think in the second year, if Aaron Rodgers comes back, it's got to be a Super Bowl win. Fans are out here saying you're Super Bowl contenders, which kind of think is crazy. <laughs> I get it. You know, rah, rah, New York, been in the dumps for a minute. I get all that. But bare minimum divisional this year, and I would like to see the title game or, or really a Super Bowl win. I'd really like to see a Super Bowl appearance first year, Super Bowl win next year. If I'm a fan, I know that's what I'm pushing for, knowing that you might have to pay this man 50, 55, 60 million dollars a year at 38, 39 years old. Like he's he's old, you know? And having a season like that right before you turn 40, like Breeze was still looking good at 40. Brady was still looking good at 40. I want to say Manning was in that 40 tier. You know, obviously he didn't look great in the last year he won the Super Bowl, but the way he played with the Broncos. So it's just, you know, just going to talk about the the legends that played later into their years, um, you know, with 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 everything and, and how it's played out in the NFL. Um, and then in terms of yards and touchdowns for Aaron Rodgers, I think about 4,500 yards for Aaron Rodgers will be fair. And I think 35 touchdowns. If y'all hear some. Scratch as my dog's trying to get in. Shift mine. Say, hey, he's podcasting out there. You leave him alone. <laughs> but again, think about 4,500 yards for Aaron Rodgers and 35 touchdowns or so would be fair for the expectations from the Jets and Aaron Rodgers in year one. Now let's talk about some compensation for him. Let's talk about his massive deal. Let's talk about the Pat McAfee show comments. Again, Aaron Rodgers said he was 90% retired going into the darkness retreat. So if if I'm a Jets fan, like I said, if you're 90% anything, and we have the pups in sitting live on the show, live audience of Inca Lewis, let's clap it up for her. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, mommy let her in. You like being in here on the show, girl? Huh? I know you do. You don't have to tell me. I love you. <laughs> um, and thanks, by the way, babe. Really appreciate you. I know you heard her out there. But again, Aaron Rodgers, 90% retired, going into the darkness retreat. So if I'm a fan, I'm going to be wary because, again, we saw – how he's held Green Bay hostage. I mean, there's literally jokes out there that Aaron Rodgers is literally playing GM for the Bears, <laughs> God, for the Packers and for the Jets right now. So, again, 90% retired, 10% playing. Now you want to completely flip the coast. Now you want to bring all these people over. Now you want to go to this brand new young team. Like, it's just, again, I would be so wary. Don't walk. Run away from Aaron Rodgers. He said he debated a retire. He said he debated a retired life and an NFL playing life while he was in there. I think that's very fair. Weigh your options. What would life be still playing? What would life be not playing? And he even said the reason he was 90% retired is he hadn't got back into his workouts yet. He wasn't, you know, really gung ho or motivated to do it. And I was like, okay, we're starting to hear some true, I guess, you know, inside thoughts of a, an older NFL quarterback that wants to retire. And again, rightfully so. Four time MVP, Super Bowl champion. Like, we don't need to go over Aaron Rodgers' resume. And I'm not, you know, ragging on the guy. 
But he said on Friday, March 10th, that he was committed to playing for the Jets, and Aaron Rodgers said that it isn't him holding up and the Packers are negotiating compensation for him. So let's talk about compensation for Aaron Rodgers, and then I am done talking Aaron Rodgers. We have had a nice segment about this. But again, I know it's a little late. It's very important. I didn't even put the graphic back up, but you know it's all good because uh, you guys are tapped in listening to me. We're still on the Rodgers Jets drama. Don't you guys worry. Should New York rework Aaron's massive deal? He's scheduled to make $60 million in 2023. And knowing how the Jets were able to draft the people that they were, knowing how the Jets were able to pay the people that they were, knowing how the Jets were able to just create the roster that they have and the camaraderie within the locker room and the personnel, I think when you, it's just like I said with Jalen Hurts, <laughs> you pay Aaron Rodgers $60 million and watch what the hell that does for your cap situation and for your actual disposability of players, or I guess how disposable players are going to seem. Once you have a, again, 38, 39-year-old, we're just going to call him 40 at this point. Love you, A-Rod, sorry. A 40-year-old quarterback on your roster, right? Um, I think it'd be fair to still pay him. I mean, he already got, you know, I think four years, 200 million, you know, a couple, couple years back after winning, I think, the first MVP, or maybe it was after the second MVP. Um, but yeah, you know, so, you know, he's he's probably still going to want that 50 million but if anything you can negotiate off, like we're talking about an extra running back, we're talking about maybe, you know, we're, we're talking about an extra player or two if you can get him to come down maybe $10, 15000000 million off that deal. You know, because again, Rodgers would make $59.465 million from the Jets in 2023. And in my opinion, if that's the case, Call Lamar Jackson and the Ravens and work something out because you're going to get more commitment. You're going to get more longevity. I know the injuries are scary, but concerning... Aaron Rodgers' attitude and wishy-washiness, I get it. The best, ability, the best ability is availability. No question about that, right? But I just, it just makes me so nervous for the Jets. You've worked so hard to get here, and you're going to bring in a diva. I get it. Zach Wilson's put a really bad taste in their mouth. The fans were literally chanting for Mike White to get put in and to play. <laughs> you took Zach stupidly at second overall, and we all knew he was a bust before you took him. When the reports came out, like we knew it wasn't going to be it for Zach Wilson. So I get it. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot tied up into this decision. But you have to rework Aaron Rodgers' massive deal. So now we have to ask the question of what should the trade package be? Apparently, they want something similar to Matthew Stafford, the Packers do, which was two first, a third, and a starting quarterback who actually went to the Super Bowl in Jared Goff. Jared Goff played very well that year that he went to the Super Bowl outside of the actual game of the Super Bowl. But now apparently the Packers don't want two firsts anymore. The reports say maybe two total picks and at least one first rounder. They're also reportedly willing to hold Aaron Rodgers until the NFL draft if they need to. So there's these questions going out around there about, oh, who's got the leverage? Does Aaron Rodgers have leverage? Does the, you know, do the Packers, do the Jets? When I read this, they're also reportedly willing to hold on to Aaron Rodgers until the NFL draft if they need to. And the Jets don't want to part with the they the Jets don't want to part with the 13th overall pick. I get it. It's a very sticky situation. You're dealing with an uncommitted older quarterback who's wishy-washy every year, who tries to be GM, who tries to run things with a team. And it's just hard. Is he worth the first? Is he even worth a second? Not getting into that. If it's me, I'd be really, really, really wary for a first round pick. I get it. We're talking about one of the greatest ever. And I understand what happened with the Matthew Stafford deal. But Matthew Stafford also did not have commitment issues. And the Rams, excuse me, and the Lions actually wanted to help Stafford get to a place that he wanted to go so he could win a Super Bowl, his first Super Bowl, matter of fact. So it's just, it's it's really different here between the way that, you know, it's just really different here between the package with Stafford and the package with Aaron Rodgers. Now, trade package, trade compensation. I'm not giving up a first if I'm the Jets. I'll give you a second and a third or maybe two seconds or maybe a second and a, con and a conditional pick. You know, I'm not going to dive super deep, but I'm not giving a first round pick for Aaron Rodgers. And the Jets aren't wanting to pay what Green Bay is asking. And Green Bay isn't in a rush to make the trade and just give Aaron Rodgers away despite wanting to clear him from the cap and move on. Again, talking about the contract, the Jets are going to have to pay Aaron Rodgers an astronomical sum in 2023, or they'll have to negotiate a new deal with him, which could take more time. 
So we're talking about compensation. We're talking about a new deal. We're talking about the Packers potentially holding him until the NFL draft. And we're also talking about his wishy-washiness and how he was 90% retired and how he's already given a list to the New York Jets for players that he wants to play with. But that sounds like a good deal. That, that sounds like a good idea, right? Hell yeah. Sign me up. Let me sign right here. I'm the New York Jets. Sign it right there. Run away. Run. The more I talk about it, the more that the writing is on the wall. Again, if you're going to pay Aaron Rodgers close to $59, $60 million, invest in Lamar Jackson. Honestly, give him a call. Work it out. You're going to get longevity. You're going to get commitment. You're going to get a lot of talent. And again, New York has to be careful because Rodgers might only play one season depending on how everything goes. And considering how indecisive and dramatic he's been with his Green Bay exit, if he does only play one season and then leave, the Jets are going to be fleeced giving up two first-round picks, let alone one. That's enough about Aaron Rodgers, though. That was a solid 34 minutes on him. I've had so much to say. I expected to have a guest on the show for tonight. I really had Friday's show ready to go, obviously. So today was just you know going live on Tuesday, regular show for you guys. Um, insane RPO would be Lamar and Henry. Yeah, but the, the Titans are bare, bro. Keep wishing. Love you, Wes. Jets could run away from Aaron and draft Tanner McKee at the end of the first or second round if they really wanted to. Yeah, I mean, they clearly have to go quarterback. And, and, and here's the thing before we move off A-Rod, right? Like, uh, the big question is going to be, well, Adam, what else do they have? Lamar Jackson's still there, like I said. The draft is there. Yeah, you might not be in the great spot. But now that I've seen draft moves happen and the halls happen, if you're willing to send out the pick and the money and the player, you can essentially make any trade in the NFL. It's just if the player, if the money, if the picks are worth it. I'm not going to devise a trade package for the Jets, but I could argue that the Jets should trade up in the draft and get somebody. I know they just, you know, obviously got Zach Wilson, but he's, he's not the guy. He's not the answer. Take your lumps. Move on. It's just like San Francisco with Trey Lance, which they should feel worse because they gave up a huge asshole to go get Trey. But again, I'm off Aaron Rodgers. 